Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our F14B and we're looking at using the AN ARA50 automatic direction finder. So this is a passive system of navigation in the Tomcat that allows us to listen to radio stations and home in on them. And we can home in on pretty much anything that's transmitting a radio signal as long as it's transmitting constantly. Now you'll notice I described it as a passive system, so it's listening only. We're not going to transmit on this system. And because of that, we're only ever going to be able to get a direction or an azimuth. We're never going to be able to get a range like you would with, for instance, TACAN. It works through the radio in the F-14. It works through the ARC-182 UHF radio. Now in the real Tomcat, it also works from the ARC-159, the uh, primary radio. But in DCS, it's only modelled through the radio 2, through 182. It works in a VHF to UHF band of 108 to 399.975 MHz. And the frequency can be programmed here in the mission editor or in the cockpit. So let's have a look at today's mission. We're here in the mission editor and there are some things that we would like to navigate to. So first of all, we've got this guy, an S3 Viking, and he's transmitting on 131 MHz and that is AM modulation. And I've set him up to transmit a wave file, and that's how we're going to find him. Then we've got down here an Abrams tank on the ground, and he is transmitting on frequency 320 MHz. And he's going to be transmitting in the FM modulation, so we're going to have to set our radio up for FM. Take a note that we can only home in on FM in the UHF range band, which is 225 to 399.975. We can't use VHF band in the FM modulation, so it's just something to uh, be aware of. And then thirdly, we're going to navigate to this airport here. Well, let's look at, we've got a transmitter here. It's a VOR with DME. So VOR stands for very high frequency omnidirectional ranging and DME is with the distance measuring equipment. So this guy here would actually allow us to navigate to him in terms of azimuth, but, and also get a range like for instance, TACA, but that's only if the actual aircraft itself has DME on board, distance measuring equipment, and the Tomcat doesn't. So we can only use this for azimuth. Back to this VOR, so we've got it here at this airport here, and just about all of the airports in this Persian Gulf have VORs in this frequency range. Note that if you're going to be flying in the Caucasus, then most of those transmitters are in the kilohertz range, the NDBs rather than VOR stations. So you probably won't be able to use this in the Caucasus for static stations. So back to this guy, we can see that this VOI is 112.30 MHz, so we're writing all of these frequencies down, and it has a Morse code identifier of Sierra Hotel Juliet, so that's something we need to be aware of when we come to navigating to that. So we'll get in the cockpit now, we'll look at the instrumentation, then we'll navigate to the Viking, then the tank, and then we'll get to the airbase for landing. I've got the, these all very close together to make a, a quick video, but you could have them up to 200 miles range depending on parameters like your altitude, weather conditions and whatnot. Okay, we're in the cockpit now. Let's put active pause on and let's have a look around. So first things first, we've got the primary radio in the uh, pilot's cockpit here. This is the ARC-159. It does have an ADF selector switch here, but as I said before, it does not work from the pilot's radio here. So it's just one thing bear for you to bear in mind. Next, we're going to be using the BDHI here to navigate to the radio signal. And we can also use the HSD down here. So if we now jump into the Rio slot in the back, this is where the actual programming for the ADF will be done. We've got the ARC-182 here, which I'm framing, and that's how we're gonna actually program in the frequencies. We've got our master radio selector here. And also one thing to note is that we have a little switch back here. This determines what information is going to be shown on the pilot's HSD and ECMD. Now it's currently not implemented, but it says in the manual that it will be implemented. And for the ADF to work on those systems, we need to have that set to both. So it's just something to avoid frustration later, perhaps. Another thing to avoid frustration later is that this system takes five minutes to warm up from once it's turned on. We've got a hot started plane here, so we don't have to worry about that. But if you've got a cold started plane, that's something to bear in mind. Of course, we've got another BDHI here from where the uh, Rio can uh, do the navigation. Okay, so first things first, let's uh, program the system to track that Viking, wherever it is. So I've got a master controller here. Make sure that we are set to UHF-2, which is our ARC-182. 
over to the ARC 182 and we're going to turn it to manual frequency, manual mode. We could do it with presets, but we're going to do it with the manual mode today. So left and then right click to manual mode and we're going to look up his frequency. It's 131 AM modulation. So let's program the frequency in. And um, I've already done a, a video on how to use these radios. Now, if you can hear that wave file being shouted, that is the transmitted signal from that Viking over there somewhere. For our function mode, we're currently selected transmit, receive, and guard. So what we want to do now is turn it to direction finding. So we'll right click. So we're now selected direction finding. And it's now listening to that frequency passively and controlling the BDHI and HSD. And we can see here that it's telling us to go just right of north. It's the smaller of the needles that is the ADF needle. And let's go and confirm that back in the pilot. We can see again, just right of north. And we look at HSD down here. You can see that arrow there is pointing to our radio source. And just to confirm on F10 map, just to make sure that tallies. Yep, there's the S3 tanker and there's us. Well, let's, uh, let's go and follow him. Now, it's not going to give us a range, like I said. It's not going to give us an altitude. It's just going to give us an azimuth. So let's unpause and carry on. So let's track left 90 degrees. There is a friendly Viking, 11 o'clock, three miles. Sure is. Okay, so our needle is just resting on the 12 o'clock position now. Turn in, and there's our little guy. And you can see as he tracks right, then our needle is going to follow him right. And that's that. Right, so that's that done. The next thing we want to do is to go and find that tank. So we're going to active pause again. Back to the Rio seat. And we are going to find his frequency. So it's 320 on FM. So we're going to cycle up to 320. And we're going to switch to FM. And um, just to make sure that we can hear him, we're going to go back to transmit receive. And you can hear him transmitting the same thing, so we're now going to go, going to, go to direction finding. And we should have our BDHI, he's telling us to go uh, that there. And let's go back to the cockpit again, and we can see, yep, we've got the same thing uh, shown here. And there, so let's unpause and get on with it. And you'll find that these needles aren't perfectly uh, kind of stationary. They like to move left and right a little bit. So you just have to allow for that when you're in a roll. So five more degrees. Okay. HSD and BDH are both lined up with the 12 o'clock position now. We're going to go low because uh, he's a tank, obviously. And let's go and see if we can visualize him. I've got no way of knowing how far away he is, remember. But there's a little trick you can do. When you know when you're getting close to him because the needle will start to move either left or right a bit more uh, aggressively than it has been and that's how you know you're getting close. Also, whenever you go over the top of him, the needle will obviously swing round and so that's how you know that you're over the top. If he happens to be a, a, a runway beacon, then you'll also get a tone as well. But let's uh, concentrate on finding him. That is a dot over to the right there, I see. Let's see if that's anything. Check the speed. Still bang on the nose, according to these two chaps. Just the radar warning. And that is him there. So that's him transmitting on the FM modulation 320. And watch what happens to the needles when we pass him. Thwomp! The needles are span round, span round on both of those instruments. So that's that done. Now we're going to contact the VOR. And this is going to be a little more involving, which is good. So let me just pause that there. So back to the rear seat again. And the frequency is 112.3, so down we go, 112.3, I'm going to make sure that we, we can hear it okay, so we're going to go back to transmit receive, and going to listen to a Morse code, you hear that Morse code identifier, that's the one that's going to make sure that we've got onto the right VOR. <clears throat> so before we do anything, we need to go and look up our Morse code identifier, which is Sierra Hotel Juliet in Google. Uh, stand by, let me find out what that is. Other uh, search engines are available, of course. Right, Sierra Hotel uh, Juliet is dot dot dot, break dot 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 dot, break dot dash dash dash. So let's listen, listen to the next cycle.
That was three dots, break, four dots, break, dot, dash, dash, dash. So that is our Morse code identifier of Sierra Hotel Julia. So we're on the correct station. Now we can turn to direction finding and we're now going to get our navigation indicators as before and that will take us to the airbase. So back in the cockpit, unpause, off we go. Where is it taking us this time? It is to the four o'clock by the looks of it. Prefer to use the BDHI just because the HSD is just harder to see behind the stick if you like to have the stick turned on. Okay, needles are being a bit funky at the moment and that's okay. Uh, this is a line of sight system, remember, so that if you go behind a hill or a mountain, it just won't work. So that's something to bear in mind. It's caught me out many times. Uh, still to the right. Are we close to it or something? No, no, it's all fine. Okay, coming on to our 12 o'clock now. Burner's on, let's make it a quick trip. It's on our nose now. So let's, as well as finding the airport, let's see if we can find the actual trans VOR transmitting station. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but the Tomcat does not have DME distance measurement equipment, so we can't make use of the DME on this VOR. There's the airbase. Just slightly right. And watch the needle, and when it spins round, we are over the VOR. It's that little building there, I bet. Almost certainly. And spin round. And there it goes. There you go. So that's the video done. It's shown you uh, how to navigate all these different types of frequencies and modulations. Like I said, it could be anything that's transmitting a message. It could be plane, boat, tank, man, house, whatever. And it's completely programmable in the Mission Editor Sandbox. That's everything showed. I hope that helps and see you later.